between iOS 8 and iOS 7. Now I know iOS 8 has just been released, it's in beta 1 stage, and I personally am surprised with how well it does run in the first beta. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how it runs, you know, turning the device on and off, how it launches applications, and I'm gonna run a Geekbench to show you in depth what the scores are actually like. Now these are both iPhone 5 models, both A1429 models, and the one on the left is on iOS 7, 7.1.1, and the one on the right is on iOS 8, the first beta. So let's go ahead and see how iOS 8 stacks up with iOS 7 in the first beta release. Now do understand it will get better as time goes on, this is just the first beta release. All right, so with both devices completely stock and virgin, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn them off, show you how they stack up in a shutdown and startup test. So with both of these right here, I'm gonna slide and turn both of them off. Now it's a little hard to see, but the one on the left does turn off a little bit faster than iOS 8, it keeps spinning. And once it is off, I'm gonna go ahead and start them up and see which one turns on first. Now do keep in mind that iOS 8 does have many new features, so it has a lot more to preload than iOS 7 during a startup test. So even if it doesn't surpass it, but stays at the level of iOS 7, that's already impressive because it has so much more to load and it's still something to be able to match up the speed of iOS 7. Now on the left, the iPhone 5, the screen has dimmed before the one on the right with iOS 8 so it should be turning on a little bit faster. Now these kind of tests, you know, they're not really accurate because true to life, people don't really care about how long their iPhone takes to turn on. And you know, as we can see on the left, iOS 7 has booted up first with iOS 8 following it. And do keep in mind, this is still the first version of iOS 8. So anything we see now could be improved in the future. For the next test, I'm just gonna make sure everything is cleared from the multitasking bar. Anyways, we're just gonna launch a couple applications, see usability-wise how these stack up. Anyways, camera application, iOS 7 loaded just a pinch faster than iOS 8. Next, we're just gonna go into settings. And again, it just loaded a little bit faster. So generally, they're up to par. They're both very much similar. And next off, we're just gonna run a Geekbench score. Now to get a more accurate result, we're gonna go ahead and run Geekbench. This will give us a more accurate number to compare these two devices on two different firmwares. And as you can see, they're exactly the same. So let's go ahead and run the processor benchmark. And at the end, we'll see accurately how these two devices stack up on two different firmwares. And as we end the test, we're gonna be able to see that both of these devices are almost exactly the same. It's just a few points apart, iOS 8 takes the lead. Now, this isn't the same test that I had. I actually did another one before this, and it was a little bit different. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the other one. And the multi-core score on the iOS 8 device was actually better. Now, I'm not sure if that's a direct result of the new metal feature Apple is adding to iOS 7. However, I don't even know if that's been implemented yet in the first place. Metal is a software addition to iOS 8 that basically removes a huge processing layer between the chip and the device. So it would result in a much better multi-core score, especially when running more intensive applications. So from these tests and the score, and the fact that iOS 8 is still in its infancy, I can see that it will be a great operating system. We just have to give it time, and later on in its life, it should be a lot better performance-wise. So even right now, I can tell it's gonna be a great software. There'll be many new features, and it won't be slowing down our devices in the process. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Peace. Hey guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and in this video I'm going to be doing a comparison between iOS 8 and iOS 7. Now I know iOS 8 has just been released, it's in beta 1 stage, and I personally am surprised with how well it does run in the first beta, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how it runs, you know, turning the device on and off, how it launches applications, and I'm going to run a Geekbench to show you in depth what the scores are actually like. Now these are both iPhone 5 models both A1429 models, and the one on the left is on iOS 7, 7.1.1, and the one on the right is on iOS 8, the first beta. So let's go ahead and see how iOS 8 stacks up with iOS 7 in the first beta release. Now do understand it will get better as time goes on, this is just the first beta release. All right, so with both devices completing iOS 8 and iOS 7. Now I know iOS 8 has just been released, it's in beta one stage, and I personally am surprised with how well it does run in the first beta. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how it runs, you know, turning the device on and off, how it launches applications, and I'm gonna run a Geekbench to show you in depth what the scores are actually like. Now these are both iPhone 5 models, both A1429 models, and the one on the left is on iOS 7, 7.1.1, and the one on the right is on iOS 8, the first beta. So let's go ahead and see how iOS 8 stacks up with iOS 7 in the first beta release. Now do understand it will get better as time goes on, this is just the first beta release. All right, so with both devices completely stock and virgin, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn them off, show you how they stack up in a shutdown and startup test. So with both of these right here, I'm gonna slide and turn both of them off. Now it's a little hard to see, but the one on the left does turn off a little bit faster than iOS 8, it keeps spinning. And once it is off, I'm gonna go ahead and start them up and see which one turns on first. Now do keep in mind that iOS 8 does have many 